Um, I think like, yeah, John. We want to talk some about those men. <laughs> you don't choose to believe something like that, right? But Ron, not Ron, Hermione and Doge both are introducing He says no. But in the grave that he digs for himself and the mouth in our basement, Harry accepts the I slash I capital I reflection. He chooses to deny certainty he will never see Dumbledore again and symbolic and powerful. Harry accepts the mirror reflection as a means to salvation and self-transcendence. He accepts the reflection as reality. Put him off. Put him off. Uh, and of course, Dobby is the big deal. But in case you're still asking yourself if there is symbolic meaning to the eye of Mrs. Debbie Howard, the story itself largely turns on the interpretation of a symbol, what Roland three times called the triangular eye. Um, the mirror shard coming to a point at one end almost certainly is trying to do it too. Now the narrative drive in every Harry Potter book, what keeps us turning the page to the end, is a mystery. Right. We have a mystery that, that the trio have to solve. Every year we've got the Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew at Hogwarts running around, you know, in this little club trying to solve the mystery. Right? And that, that's great. And, and we can find out, you know, where is the Philosopher's Stone? Black, how's the area of the tournament? Uh, and this year's mystery, the Deathly Howl's mystery, is Dumbledore's assignment to Hermione, the book. Right. So inside a book, we're trying to understand the smartest character, his name is John Granger. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's given a book to interpret, and we're supposed to watch her interpret this book. Right, to figure out what we should be doing. She says it all turns on this one swing, this triangulated, bisected circle that Rowan calls the triangular arm. This is a weird circle, obviously. Uh, now, Hermione's assignment, and the people at uh, Harry Potter Alliance love this, their, Hermione's assignment is read children's stories, discover their meaning. And then use the discovery to defeat Voldemort and save the world. Straight forward, right? And as far as your assignment as Harry Potter readers, they read the children's books, discover their meaning, and then defeat the dog. You have the tools, you have the example inside the book. And it's all about this symbol. Does, does Hermione have the tools for the job? Yes. She's language capable, she's persistent, she's very intelligent. No, she's unwilling to accept bizarre or unconventional meaning, however obvious it may be. Deathly Hallows is a textbook about how to read a book symbolic at their four levels. I mean, the, the traditional four levels of meanings I describe in all of my books, because it's how I read books. It's how John Ruskin, Dante, Spencer, all the, all the greats read books. You have, a, you have a surface meaning, which is the narrative line, through which all the other meaning has to come. And you have a, a moral meaning. Pretty much the right and wrong, the good guys and the bad guys. Then you have a, an allegorical meaning, where it's a, it's a transparency, where these characters reflect certain archetypal truths that with which you resonate, certain mythic meaning. And then there's anagogical meaning, the sublime meaning, where it's not so much a transparency that you look through as it is a translucency. It, it, it actually is something coming into the world and it's changing, really alchemical. You've entered into the story so much that you're having the, uh, the moment that you have when you enter into a book, a story, or a play, and you've become those lead characters so much so that their crisis is your crisis. That's, that's a translucence where it, it's coming at you rather than a transparency that you look through to see some mythic reality. And those four levels, Rowling gives us those four levels. The three are right in the, the three are fairly obvious in the storyline. The surface the interpretation of the triangular eye is Victor Crumb. Victor Crumb sees the triangulated eye and flips out. He sees a swastika. And he just wants to beat up anybody who's wearing the triangular eye. To include uh, Xenophilius Love, who's kind of cop, cop, you know, basically Victor Crumb. Right? How it out there is that a feeling? So he's a da dark, dangerous Nazi. Yeah? Um, but that's the superficial meaning. And Rowling is basically saying, don't go with the superficial interpretation of the symbol. You're going to miss out the stuff. Because, for example, a swastika 
in, 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 uh, when Germany became the, uh, had the presidency of the European Union, one of the things they tried to do was make the swastika illegal throughout Europe. Who objected? The Hindus. The Hindus, right? I mean, the Hindus said, that's a little bit like making crosses illegal because the Klan used them. And they, the swastika has been part of Hinduism for you know, several millennia. So they were like, wait, you know, we've had bad swastikas for 50 years, can we just rule on making this illegal? Uh, superficial reads are not the way to go. Rowling is saying quite clearly. The moral level of meaning is what Ron does. When Ron looks at that symbol and, he, and he hears the story of the three brothers, he says, oh, it's, it's a morality tale. It's things like, you know, don't go out late at night, don't get caught alone in the forest. It's just things that guide you along the way, teach you a little lesson. And, that, and Hermione agrees, oh, that's what it is, that's what it is. And then we get the allegorical meaning where Zenophilius explains that each one of the parts uh, that symbol has a tit for tat correspondence with a reality. That the circle is the resurrection stone. That the, 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 the vertical line is the wand of destiny, and that the triangle is the invisibility flow. And Hermione gags at that interpretation. Now that has to be considered rather fun. That Hermione says, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Now, the one of Destiny story, that makes actually sense. That's, that's got historical precedent. She could have confirmed that. You know, because first wasn't making that up, obviously. The resurrection stone, she pretty much knows that Harry's got that in his pocket. <laughs> and the invisibility quote, she has been playing with that thing for six years. <laughs> and yet she says, absolutely not. Can't possibly play the invisibility quote. You're doing that. Wow, I mean, that wasn't really a stretch. <laughs> Because allegorical is beyond what you can get just from the story line. You can get the good guys, the bad guys, and the events of the story. Once you go beneath that, now you have to actually be looking at things differently. You have to be looking at that sacramental vision that Dante talked about. You have the same thing as a, as a transparency. And Hermione can't go there. That's why Zenobius says she's a little slut. <laughs> no, you think it's just kind of ironic because he's a little upside down. But he actually sees at that level better than she does. He's, she, he's lunar, like his daughter is Luna. The, the, the lunar sphere is the one that's just beyond the earthly sphere. Uh, and that's where Xenophilius obviously lives. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Sure. Um, there's a fourth level of meaning, too, which we have time, I'll go back to that. The, fourth, the sublime level of meaning has to do with the burial of that I believe is high level, which includes all of the triangular things. If I don't get to it, you can buy my <laughs> This is so that my daughter can tell my wife that I did the first book. <laughs> what would be take away from the triangular eye symbol? Symbols are multivalent and are understood in at least three levels, really four, and they're essential knowledge for victory over the dark world. Dumbledore says that these stories have a power beyond any magic, beyond magic. Why? Because understood their most important level of meaning, similar to about what are most real and what's most important. Which, yes, we're getting finally to that point. I said, we're thinking, no, we're good. What is this lecture about? Okay, we've got a lot of story symbols in Harry Potter. That's very kind of Ms. Rowling to make a book within the book, again, about how to read her books correctly. Chamber of Secrets is also a book about how to read a book. When you look for layers of meaning beneath the story's narrative line, the most important Symbol of the book, though, is the triptych of the three major characters. Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Uh, Hermione, Ron is clearly the body, right? Ron is uh, the passionate person, not the sharpest knife in the drawer, likes to have three square meals a day, um, loyal, uh, sacrificial even, when he's, when he's aligned correctly with the other parts of the soul triptych or whatever, uh, but not someone who can act well on his own. Hermione, the intellect. She is, not, not the intellect, she is the discursive intelligence. She's the reason. She can't see things through a transparency. Right? She can see things as they are. She doesn't like the, uh, doesn't like Trelawney, doesn't like uh, Zenobius Lovegood. We are really uncomfortable around Luna. You know, major issues with Luna, right? Um, they're, they're like opposites, types of intelligence. And then there's Harry Potter. Who is, it, it, this, this triptych is a, a mind, body, soul triptych. Now, call it, uh, 
you've all read Lord of the Rings or seen the movies, right? Okay, the, 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 the most famous triptych in fantasy literature are the three hobbits on Mount Doom. Right? We've got Gaul. Guess what? You know? That's a Vatican I Catholic image of the body and the passions, right? Not looking too good. Not looking up, right? <laughs> then you've got the will and the reason in Sam. I'll carry you with the mountain. <laughs> and then there's Frodo. It's so good. So. Uh, but I must carry myself. It's sacrificial. He's the heart. And he's the lead of the whole bunch. He's what keeps those three together. And they're all, we obviously have the back of one half of resolution and the body is thrown into the flames. <laughs> um, I mean, he makes a bad movie, he goes into the hole. Um, we, we see it recast in the Star Wars films where uh, we see Hollywood's version of the body is looking a lot better with Han Solo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot more cut. I mean, things are looking good here for the body here. And we've got, but again, we have Princess Leia as the will. She's, she's all about pride and will and determination. And then there's the Skywalker, trusting in force. He's the spirit. So we've got body, mind, and spirit. They all get this from the Buddhist Karamasa, which is the greatest novel ever written and ever read it. Read it before you read the document. It's the greatest thing. The three brothers in that book, Ayosha is the spirit, Ivan is the mind, the reason, and Dimitri is the passions. And their relationships, you experience them, you identify with them. The reason this works in literature and movies so powerfully that all of these people use it is it's also Bella, Edward, and J.P. <laughs> 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 Do the Snoopy, do the Snoopy on better than Twilight. <laughs> that's what the that's what the Lord of the Rings people did to us. <laughs> <laughs> Because we have you know, our aspect of the soul is a trinity. We have, we have a, a more passionate side, which is tied to our body. We have a more reasonable, rational, spiritually tied to our senses. And we have a heart. You know, what, what, what Jesus of Nazareth is called the heart, which is what the fathers of the church, the medieval philosophers called the intellectus, which is not the discursive intelligence, not reasoning and logic, it's, not, it's a perception, but what the Greeks call the nous, the noetic faculty of the soul. And this heart faculty, this eye of the soul, the eye, um, that is what Harry Potter represents in the book. And when your heart sees this cryptic combination, all is well. The most painful part of these books, I hope you agree with me, are when the triptych break down. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are long, painful. Like, where's Ron? Ron left the two? Ron should And you feel a piece of you is missing. And when Ron comes back, I'll start crying. When Ron comes back, oh, the God of Fire, I always cry at God of Fire when I read the part of it. When Ron says, you know, here's someone's trying to kill me. <laughs> and I do that in my